Have you ever wondered how your phone knows when to buzz, how Google gives you the right answers, or how video games respond to every click or button you press? Behind all these digital wonders is something both invisible and powerful, programming. But what is programming really? It's not just lines of text or complex code meant for tech geniuses. At its core, programming is just the art of telling computers what to do. And today, we're going to break it all down in the simplest way possible. Let's dive in right here on History of Simple Things. Let's break that down a bit. Imagine you're trying to give instructions to someone who has no idea how the world works. If you tell them, go make a sandwich, they'll stare blankly at you. But if you say, pick up two slices of bread, open the jar of peanut butter, spread it on one slice, close the jar, put the slices together, now they get it. That's exactly what programming is. You're giving clear, detailed instructions to a computer, step by step, so it knows exactly what to do and how to do it. Now, just like humans speak different languages, English, Spanish, Filipino, computers have their own languages too. These are called programming languages. You might have heard of some, Python, JavaScript, Java, or C++. Each has its own grammar and rules, but they all serve the same purpose, helping humans communicate with machines. But here's the twist. Computers don't really understand English or Python directly. What they understand is something called binary, a long sequence of ones and zeros. That's their native language. So when we write code in something like Python, it has to be translated into binary so the computer can actually carry out the instructions. That translation is done by programs called compilers or interpreters, depending on the language being used. Think of them as the translators in a multilingual conversation. Programming started decades ago when computers were the size of entire rooms and could barely perform basic math. Back then, programmers had to input commands using punch cards or massive switches. But as technology evolved, so did the languages. Programming became more human-friendly, less about controlling hardware, more about solving problems. Today, it's everywhere. From smart homes to online shopping, streaming platforms to banking systems. It's all running on code written by programmers. So how does programming actually work? Let's say you want to build a simple calculator. First, you need to figure out what it should do. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Then you decide how the user will interact with it, maybe through buttons on a screen. After that, you write out the logic. If the user clicks plus, add the two numbers. That logic is written in a language the computer can understand. Once the program is written, it's tested to make sure it works properly. This is where bugs, errors in the code, can show up. And trust me, they will show up. Debugging is a huge part of programming. It's less like writing an essay and more like solving a puzzle where every piece has to fit perfectly. Once the code is polished, it can be compiled or run, and voila, the calculator works. Behind the scenes, your instructions are being carried out at lightning speed, doing exactly what you told the machine to do. Programming isn't just a solo adventure either. While the image of a lone coder in a dark room might come to mind, most real-world projects are team efforts. One person might handle the user interface, another focuses on the database, and someone else ensures the app works smoothly on different devices. This collaboration leads us to a major concept in programming, problem solving. At its heart, programming is really about solving problems. Whether it's helping people find a ride, translating text, or improving healthcare systems, Code is the tool that makes those solutions possible.
The cool part, anyone can learn to code. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, a math whiz or an artist. Programming isn't about memorizing commands. It's about learning how to think logically and creatively. It's like learning how to build with Lego blocks. At first, you copy instructions, but eventually, you start building your own designs. And no, you don't need to be a genius or have a computer science degree to start. Platforms like Scratch, Python, and even websites like Codecademy or Free Code Camp offer step-by-step -step tutorials to guide you. All it takes is curiosity and patience. Let's go back to daily life. When you order food through an app, code handles your location, shows nearby restaurants, manages your cart, processes payments, and tells the restaurant what you ordered. All of that happens in seconds, thanks to thousands of lines of code written by different programmers. And programming isn't just about the digital world either. It's crucial in robotics, space exploration, medical devices, and even agriculture. Farmers now use software to monitor crop health, and doctors use code-powered tools to diagnose diseases more accurately. It's everywhere, and it's growing. With the rise of AI and machine learning, programming is going beyond just automation. Computers can now recognize faces, understand speech, even predict weather patterns or assist in scientific discoveries. And behind all that, you guessed it, programmers writing code, training machines, and building smarter systems. Of course, with great power comes great responsibility. As programmers, there's also an ethical side to consider. How we write code, who it impacts, how it handles data, these all matter. Code can change lives for better or worse, that's why learning not just how to code, but why we're coding is just as important. So what is programming? It's not just about apps or websites. It's a superpower. It lets you take ideas, no matter how big or small, and turn them into something real, something that can be shared with the world. It teaches you how to break big problems into smaller ones, how to be patient, how to think differently. It's one of the most valuable skills of our time. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.